have a present <laughs> from us to you. There we go. It was Isabelle's birthday recently. Little sprites. Oh, Groose. The Groose is loose. We're going to have to use him in uh, in World of Light. But here we go. Hey there, it's Adam AK, Swimming Bird, and welcome to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. This is part three of the main series where we're going to learn how to play a classic long lost duo. And along the way, we'll unlock a couple characters, including one who has never been in Smash before. So if you missed any episodes so far, there's a playlist down in the description. If you want to see Link battle Ganon in his pig demon form, or maybe learn how to play this big green reptile here, King K. Rule, there's those episodes for you to check out. And on top of that, there's also another series playlist for World of Light, the single player story mode. So please check those out if you're interested. The duo I'm talking about back after 10 years, the Ice Climbers, of course. We have Popo in the front and Nana in the back for the first four outfits, and then they swap places so you can play as either of them. They work together as a team, and even now, they're very unique, especially back in Melee when they debuted. Unfortunately, they were cut from Smash on Wii U and 3DS due to technical limitations, which you can see why here they are two characters, so you get, you know, eight people playing as them. There's 16 Ice Climbers on the screen, so you gotta be, you know, working hard as a uh, as a game system if you want to pull that off. So the Ice Climbers, they will typically be in sync, and that is why their moves can be very, very powerful when working together, but there's also reasons to split them apart we'll go into. Their, their special moves I should start with here. They've got Ice Shot, which is their neutral B. They shoot out these little icebergs. If they're alone, they shoot one, but if they're together, they will shoot two, and those can be reflected back at you, so be careful about how you throw them out and who you're throwing them out against. They are very, very strong, but they have a little bit of a short range due to their hammers, but you can hear the power when they just smack people around. It has a very satisfying sound to it. Their side B is Squall Hammer. This little squall wind surrounds them, an icy wind, and it has a bit of a, uh, a property like Meta Knight's old Mock Tornado before it changed to the new one that just has that one hit. So you can kind of combo people and then knock them away with the final hit, which is a bit stronger. And of course, all of their special moves, if you are separated, are not as strong, so it's not as big of a, uh, a whirlwind when you just have one Ice Climber on their own. Their down B is called Blizzard, and you can freeze your opponent and set them up for some really good damaging combos and, uh, and smash attacks and things like that. So that is pretty good if you can lock them in. They now only uh, Blizzard on one side. They used to, you know, switch sides or just, you know, cover both sides before. Their down smash now hits on both sides. So that's a pretty good new addition. You have options if you want to cover your back if you got your Ice Climber buddy with you. And their up B is called belay. It's a, a climbing term for, you know, rooting yourself by a person or a stake. It will launch Nana or Popo, you know, whoever's in the back up as a tether, basically. And then you can grab onto the ledge with them. If Popo is alone, you can see if I can get Nana separated here. Oop, well, they both, <laughs> they didn't separate, but they did go off and die together. If you, you do separate and you try to belay, then you will not go very far at all. It's it's better, to, honestly, if you're alone as an ice climber, to just directional air dodge back to the stage. You'll get more distance than you would if you belay on your own, as you can see. Well, he's gonna carry me off the top. <laughs> well, there's an illustration of something we talked about last time in K. Rule's episode, using the propeller pack to do that. So the ice climbers, just in general, they are faster in this game, and the back ice climber, the one you're not playing as, does move even faster than your main one because they try to keep them together. The game really wants them to stay together so you're not desyncing or doing any crazy stuff, but you can still do that, and we'll go into it a bit here. And uh, yeah, the, your, your back buddy is gonna just constantly dash to get to you if you get separated. I love their little dance routine here. <laughs> I feel like they've got one of the best victory themes, even if it was shortened a little bit. But, uh, but some of the changes to their grabs, you can't do wobbling or, or, you know, some of their past techniques anymore because only Popo or Nana in the front can grab, and the other Ice Climber will cheer, or they'll get sad when you get grabbed. Here's a character that uh, debuted in Brawl, which is pretty appropriate because we're playing as a, a character who hasn't been around since Brawl. 
But uh, but yeah, they uh, they have a little bit of a difference to them with grabs, as you can see. Oop, she did a spot dodge there, so he couldn't show you. But it's uh, it's fun to see. It's a little bit like Luma. I feel like Rizalina and Luma were almost a bit of a replacement for them in a simpler way, because there's a bit of uh, the other partner kind of freaking out or just, you know, getting happy if you do something good to make it so you can't kind of desync. But there are ways around it, as I said. So there we go. We unlocked Pit. And a picture of Shulk in his underwear for everyone. <laughs> Everyone's running on the beach. Mario's got his sunshine theme. So we got 10 fighters in total. So let's back out of here. We're going to jump into Classic with the Ice Climbers. Keep talking about them a little bit. And, uh, and get that new character I've been looking forward to playing. So their theme is Duo for Days. We're going to be fighting different duos. I love all the different themes. And they've got a good one. But it is going to make it a little tougher because we have to fight two characters at once. So, uh, so yeah, if you are trying to do some shenanigans with them, I am not the most versed in the Ice Climbers. i played a little bit of them through the years. But there is a thing called desyncing. You can look this up if you want to know other methods. An easy way to do it is to throw out a special move and hold the special button down, and then after you grab, Nana will start doing special moves and, uh, and be, see, she's doing a blizzard without me, that sort of thing. So you can kind of stagger what you're throwing out with them to make it... Ooh, let's be careful. Oh no, my shield broke, but I can kind of mash buttons with Nana, and uh, she'll she'll save me a little bit by protecting me because her shield did not break, so that's a, that's a nice benefit of the Ice Climbers having a separate shield system. But, uh, hey, Zelda. Oh, no. <laughs> I should get out of here. Let's go. They're getting so many Pokeballs. Did they grab that? Oh, she's golden now. She got the blessing of the of the magical deer. Uh, so, yeah, they, uh, they do have some weird stuff where if you're going to parry with Popo or whoever's in the lead, you do have to be careful because often the, uh, the climber in the back will get hit, even if you get the parry successful, stuff like that. But having two characters mean you get, you know, double double the power often. And if one of your moves hits, like an aerial doesn't hit with one of them, I'm just going to cheese Link out here, then, uh, then the other one might. So, you know, you could throw out a fair, miss the spike with Popo, and then Nana gets it. Stuff like that that can be really frustrating to deal with, but very nice when you are the one dishing it out. And we're going up against Ryu and Ken. I'm going to be careful here because they are on a, a stage that has that walk-off on the side. We can use that to our advantage, though. So let me, let's uh, see if we can grab one of them and launch them off. Just got to be careful there. Ooh, somebody parried. Couldn't tell who it was in the midst of battle, but Ken is out of here. I don't think we have to necessarily KO both characters. It is more the one that is the uh, in the lead there. The, the big thing with the Ice Climbers, though, unfortunately... So, yeah, Ken doesn't really count for that as much. There we go. Unfortunately, with the way that their hammers are so short, they will often uh, miss a lot of their attacks. You have to be extra careful with uh, with your range, because, you know, unlike somebody like DDD, these little mallets are, are very uh, very close to their body. Like, the, the handles aren't very long, and they're, and they're, they're made for them, because they're short little... Ex expedition experts. So you gotta, you gotta, you know, make sure you're spacing that stuff out well. Ooh, jeez, we got fishing hook. This is a bad combo here. We do not want to get in that vortex of the bowling ball and get grabbed by the fishing hook. Ooh, yeah, they are. They're gonna be rough. They could pocket both of our ice shots if they wanted to. I'm gonna try to keep them away and just knock them off the edge. Ooh, have a present. <laughs> From must to you. There we go. It was Isabelle's birthday recently, so it's appropriate we give her a nice gift. I'm going to be careful about how much I let them get items, though. They're... Ooh, is that a pizza? That sounds good. I think somebody else grabbed it, though. Of course. <laughs> I love how... Yeah, there's, like... There's so many unique animations in this game that you'll see ones for, like, them, them being on the ground and eating and things like that. I would love that bullet bill. There we go. That'll do it. <laughs> okay. I oh look at Nana. I think Popo's saying a prayer for Nana. I don't know where she got lost in the shuffle there, but hopefully she is all right. Nice. Okay. So yeah, and so many classic duos. 
that it they could have easily when they added Diddy Kong done like a Donkey Kong Diddy Kong duo, but I think they're they're unique enough as their own characters where they didn't need to do that. During the course of just normal gameplay, you might notice the ice climbers desyncing, and then you can just keep repeating things. Like one of my my favorite ones to do is the uh, just kind of throw out up airs a lot if you got them kind of desync, because you can just cover an area really well by having them constantly, you know, like this. There we go. I did it for a second there. Well, they'll they'll mess up their they'll you know desynchronize their timing. Of course, that's where the word comes from, and they will uh, do that to cover a lot more area. Let's do, uh, here we go, Iceberg is dead before I can even jump up to grab on that pterodactyl. But the uh, the new Final Smash, the new redone version of their Final Smash is this Iceberg that moves around. You can kind of direct it around the stage a little. And the polar bear, the cool polar bear with the pink hot pants and the sunglasses <laughs> appears on that Iceberg. And if he hits your opponent, this would be a great stage to get it on here because it's so huge. If he, uh, if he hits your opponent, he will do a ton of knockback, so you want to try to get them to run into that polar bear. Palutena is very tricky now with her explosive flame, which was one of her custom moves in the last game, but now is on her default ones here. She got a couple of her customs added, since customs are not really a thing outside of the Mii Fighters. But, uh, but yeah, the Iceberg is pretty, pretty strong in terms of final smashes, and you can get on that pterodactyl and, uh, and get out of the way. It's very tough to avoid getting hit by it if it is going across the stage. I love that their up tilt is really good. You've seen me probably use it a few times here because it just catches them Ooh, together. Whoa, this is getting bad. Ah, man, they really ganged up on me. I got to stay towards the, uh, towards the center. I'm going to use a ticket so we can keep that difficulty going. Then we don't lose any difficulty when we uh, use that, because if you use gold, it does take you down in difficulty. We gotta go around here. I don't want to get stuck in these caves of life necessarily, but it does keep you alive. It's gonna, you know, backfire. They're playing real crummy here where they're just, yeah. <laughs> we got one backed away, throwing explosive flames, and one trying to get in there. It's a little rough when you're playing as what's basically one character, and they're They've got the advantages. Yeah, see, he's he's surviving much longer because of the uh, the ceiling helping him out. Let's see if we can get hurt. Ooh, you can kind of drift that back. Ooh, there's a bomb down there we didn't even know about. Yeah, those can get reflected pretty easily now, so you got to be careful. You can drift back with the squall hammer, but uh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be down here because I'm not used to this stage well enough to know where. Uh, some of the platforms end. There we go. Did pick? No, he's still alive. This stage is so huge. It takes forever to kill people if you're not in the right spot. Whoa. Let's see if we can get both of them. They're going to bounce all over the place, though. Uh, if you get enough percent, it does not matter how much they bounce. They're still going to bounce out. There's that. <laughs> he's just like, bless the hammer, whenever he does that pose. All right. It's getting tougher and tougher here. So it's gonna put my ice climber, my very, you know, meager short time with them to the test, but we'll see how we do. I do like their, uh, their down air because it does do that, that sort of spike, but it also, uh, staggers it enough when you have two of them going to make it work well. But yeah, the, uh, the desync stuff, I need to get, that's definitely, like, one of the more advanced techniques with them. There are many ways to do it, and when you get it right, I think it is a good way to, uh, to really mess with people, but you do have to, have to be careful, so I'm doing it right now where she's throwing out those squall hammers. But it's throwing me off enough from how I would normal play, so I'm gonna, gonna err on the, uh, the side of letting other people do that who are more skilled with it. Look how fast Nana got back to us. There we go, Black Hole helped me out. Nana was just, yeah, booking it towards me. <laughs> I thought it was one of the computers coming to kill Popo at first, but... That was her saying, hey, I gotta get back to his side. Okay. I can't, I don't know if I mentioned, I know Ice Climber was a NES game that uh, I saw a lot when, as a kid, I would go to rent stuff in the, in the black box NES games, the Nintendo first party ones. I never really rented them because, you know, the pixel art to me as a kid, that wasn't like grabbing my attention. I would get distracted by something like a, some of the licensed games, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I definitely played a lot of mediocre games that were not 
the best because they just seemed more interesting from a box art perspective and then looking back I regret not playing things like Metroid or Kid Icarus until I was older because of that but uh, but yeah Ice Climber I was never that into them in their uh, their debut game their only game basically outside of Smash because it just I don't know the, the jump controls luckily they are much easier to jump around with in this game and do well with because they uh, they control a lot better. The, the arc of their jump in that game was so weird. And I don't know if I, I mentioned that it's kind of vague from Nintendo whether they are siblings or together. They definitely have that bond of, uh, of being a duo, and Sakurai likes to think of them as, uh, as being together as a couple. So I think that's the way that they are kind of presented here in Smash. Ooh, we have to be careful because we got Master and Crazy Hand, which I think is the first time we're fighting these guys, and they are gonna ooh, try to knock us away. Thank you, Nana. Oh my, what? It, okay, static. Jeez. And, oh, I'm all alone. Can I air dodge? There we go. Yeah, this is gonna be tough as uh, Sopo. Ooh, we did knock him down. Let's see if we can get some good damage here. Oh, he's going across the stage, though. Making it rough on me. That's Master Hand. Crazy Hand tends to be more unpredictable and, uh, you know, crazier. I, I think, <laughs> thinking about the Ice Climbers as, ooh, a duo, we'll try one ticket and then I'm gonna save those and just do gold. As, uh, as a duo, I keep wondering, like, what would be a good character set up as, uh, characters that don't get along that are, ooh, no, oh no! <laughs> Nano is on stage, just distracted. While, uh, while I fell down and died. But yeah, what's a good... Uh, you guys might be able to suggest something, because I was thinking, like, what's a good character that would maybe be, like, characters that don't like each other that are, like, worse when they're together would be really funny as a character concept. But I don't know how they would do that, because you wouldn't... You would hon honestly just try to get the, uh, the computer control... You know, whoever the other one is killed real early or something if you wanted to try to have that sort of concept. But I think that that could be interesting to have like enemies working together. There we go. Their up air is so good. It can kill, it can, you know, dice slice, do lots of good things. All right. And I love a lot of their taunts. They just kind of hop around happily. That is going to be it, except we have one last thing to do. We have almost uh almost finished up here. Hope that was a a good basic guide to the Ice Climbers. Again, lots of depth to this character, even more so than uh, m much of the cast. We'll get a couple prizes here and then I'll skip through the credits. But the, uh, the skill cap for them is very high, but I think can be very, very rewarding if you are the type of person to dive deep on how to do chain grabs and, and tons of stuff. They can be very rough to deal with when you've got somebody who is knowledgeable playing as them. But we have one more character to unlock that I'm very excited to see. Another classic NES character that I remember being uh, I was very impressed by <laughs> their debut game as a kid because it was so weird to see something that was supposed to be scary on, as a video game. I was used to things like Mario Brothers. Oh, <laughs> Kirby has taken over Nana, and that's like a weird clone that like who does who does Popo shoot with the laser gun <laughs> he doesn't know who's real it's very bizarre looking okay and we're gonna get I think some classic art for them as well for their spirit oh there's the little little sprites oh Groose the Groose is loose we're gonna have to use him in uh, in World of Light but here we go from Castlevania the original Belmont that you play as fighting Dracula it is Conan the Barbarian himself there Simon Belmont so this guy, he's uh, he's going to be really interesting to see where his spot is in the long run. He's got such a good wall of projectiles to knock people around with. And then the pretty much the most range, maybe until Piranha Plant comes out. He's not doing a good job of, uh, of showing us that stuff yet, but we will see more of him when we play as him next time. But, uh, but yeah, again, if you want to see certain characters in classic mode, I'm going to play as Simon, but there are definitely other ones that I know people probably want to see, so we will try our best to, uh, to show whatever you guys suggest in the comments. And there he goes. Simon and the Vampire Killer are now on our side. 
But yeah, they are. Uh, it was very exciting to see them get added in at long last because they were a big part of my childhood. Castlevania being this actually like scary, you know, like all the movie monsters are there sort of thing was uh, really interesting as a kid because I was into a lot of like the Wolfman and stuff like that. We got Cappy though. Aw, Lucas is celebrating. I'm glad he can find joy in life still after all he's been through. I'll acquire a total of 7,777 spirit points. Okay. I haven't been using those on the spirit board or, or doing stuff with them so far. It's too much, so we accrued quite a bit. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've got a decent amount of characters unlocked so far, but we're getting more in World of Light. Like, we got Duck Hunt, Pac-Man, Olimar there. So if you want to see how we unlock some of these, definitely check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Maybe subscribe if you have not, or hit that little notification bell to see when new videos pop up. We've got <laughs> Tomorrow's Passion from Captain Rainbow. And, oh, nice, the Nintendo Man Land uh, melody medley here. I did like the music from Nintendo Land. Oh, no. Skull Kid. I was hoping he would uh, be added in. And if we buy a few more things here, we'll unlock another spot in the shop for more outfits and songs and things. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time for more Smash Ultimate.